a ripe 30 year old one. That's a little, that's a little bit PG-13, Paige, bring it back. Hello beautiful people, welcome back to a little thing I like to call my mind and I hope that you guys are ready to join me on a little journey because I was sitting down and like coming up with a video concept and I kept realizing as I was pulling product and pulling product and putting it away that I wanted to do something that was different but also something that was like fun, laid back, chill, something that we could just like do and it didn't have to be super serious. Now just in case you're wondering and you kind of want to know like where these came from, I, I did go only to the Alta website so that that's like the first thing to know. These are only top or best sellers at Ulta, number one. Number two, what I did is I typed in whatever the category, so foundation, concealer, whatever. I typed that in at the top and I kind, I always looked at the best seller list first and um, used that as a gauge. Now, one of my main rules for this video is that it had to be something that I already had. So in some of these cases, I did have to scroll through like the first four or five products and I don't think that's a big deal. I think a lot of the way it's structured anyways, at, especially at like places like Ulta, Ulta Sephora. The rating system can be a little bit wonky because the newer products, like if, if it's brand new and it has two five-star reviews, it'll be at the top of the list when it's only been out for a week. You know what I mean? So I kind of tried to play around with it. I wanted products that were older, some that were newer. I wanted products that were like really just all across the board. Honestly, guys, I don't know why it intrigues me, but like looking at all of these products sitting next to me, because obviously I pulled them all already, it's so interesting because these are products that in my mind, I never never would have paired. I never would have looked at. Truth be told, I don't even know if like one or two of them is like still good. <laughs> we'll see. Um, so it's kind of exciting for me. So I don't know. You guys can let me know down below what you think. I'm going to stop talking. We're going to dive in. It's going to be a fun, lighthearted, quick little video and I'm excited. So let's go ahead, zoom the camera in and let's get started. All right, guys, we're good. We're zoomed in and I'm going to get started with primer. And for that, I have this little guy. This is the Smashbox, the original photo finish smooth and blur primer. Now this one you can see is in a different pattern packaging. Normally they're in like a bigger, fatter, like black tube packaging, but this one is the one that I had on hand and it's the same formula and everything, just in a different package. It was actually from their holiday collection. I want to say maybe a year or so ago and I still have it in my collection. So I'm just going to take this. It's more of like a, like a pore, a pore smoothing, like the name would suggest. Um, it's a pore smoothing type primer. It has more of like that, uh, dimethicone silicone type slip to it. So putting that Smashbox one primarily through my T-zone, I did grab another primer and you'll see why here in a second. So I grabbed the Tarte Shape Tape or the Tarte... <laughs> shape tape. This is the Tarte Base Tape Hydrating Primer. Um, it has more of like a lotion-y type consistency to it. It just really kind of soaks right in. One of the reasons that I added this in, um, I believe this one was on the best sellers, I want to say. It only had like four to five stars, but it was still on the best seller page. It was like the fourth or fifth one down. So that is, uh, it, it was on the page, which was really weird. I, out of all the primers I've tried, that one kind of shocked me, but it's okay. Um, but I wanted to make an effort and like a very concerted point to go in and give my skin a little balance because the foundation that I'm going in with, oh, Lordy, you guys, if I would have went in with just like one primer, just a matte primer, I think we would have had a situation. You guys might be asking yourself, Paige, what foundation did you choose? Like stop beating around the bush, honey. Let's just get to it. Guys, I chose I chose this. Okay, this is the Estee Lauder Double Wear Maximum Cover Camouflage Makeup. I have it in the shade 1N1 Ivory Nude, and it's the, the shade range on this stuff is abysmal. Okay, so I'm going to talk while I start applying. This is the foundation, and for those of you that have never heard of this, used it, what have you, um, first of all, this used to be one of my absolute favorites when I was like super duper oily. So this actually is going to work, I think. I just was like preliminarily spreading a little bit around my face. So let's go ahead and talk uh, briefly one of the, or the reasons that I used to love this. Okay, so number one, the coverage on this foundation, especially back when I started YouTube, which was like three-ish years ago, this had the most beautiful coverage. Like, it was so full. It was so matte. It, w it looked beautiful on my skin, and I was just die-hard, in love, obsessed with it. So that was number one. Coverage was amazing. Nice matte finish, yada, yada. Um, the reason that I ended up not wearing it anymore was just because my skin changed so much that uh, I couldn't, I couldn't wear it because as I drifted more combo, this obviously stayed matte, and it ended up making my skin look a little bit crocodile, which is actually exactly what it's doing right now. Wow. My face looks horrid, like especially around my nose. Cool. Now for concealer, y'all can just shout it out right now. What is the top selling, best selling, best performing concealer at 
freaking Ulta. Go ahead, say it with me. One, two, three. And that would be Tarte Shape Tape, honey boo boo. This thing is so good. It's one of my favorite concealers. I still use it to this day. Um, I'm using it today in the shade Fair Neutral. Let's go ahead and talk about some of the reasons that I love Tarte Shape Tape. Um, the coverage is beautiful. The staying power on my under eyes is really nice. The blend out for a matte consistency is also really nice. And I think one of the things that always sells it for me is that as I blend it out, even if even if I am having like a drier day where my skin just doesn't want that matte consistency, I still really love the way that it looks and the way that it sets. And that says a lot because there's a lot of other like matte leaning concealers that I've tried that when you go to set them, they look like sandpaper and this just isn't one of them. All right, so it is at this point that you guys know I like to set my face. And for this video, there weren't any cream products that were in the top like best selling at Ulta when I typed in like bronzer, blush, highlight and all of that. So that's totally fine. We're just gonna go ahead and lightly set the entire face. And to do that, I have yet again a cult classic something everyone loves um, or at least I should I shouldn't say everyone most people really love it if they like setting powder and that is this one from Laura Mercier this is their translucent setting powder um, and this is one that I have used in the past and I've used it a fair amount um, has it ever been like a favorite favorite of mine if I'm being honest no um, I like it don't get me wrong but there's always been something about it that I was like eh my Maybelline Fit Me is just as good. Like, it's it's a good powder, don't get me wrong. It has a nice, like, light filtered effect to it. Then I'm gonna go in very, very lightly with my Scott Barnes 67, and I'm going to just tap in the slightest amount, pick up a little bit of powder, and kind of lightly massage and dust that over my face just a little. Okay, guys, so I'm not gonna waste any time on this. The top-rated bronzer, which did shock me a little, is actually the Benefit Hula Bronzer. Now, this one right here is a mini. I just got it in the mail from Benefit, and I just thought it was so cute I had to use it. Did I have other bronzers I could have used? I mean, or like I had this in a palette. Yes, I did have that. But like, did I also want a reason to use this tiny little mini? Yes, because it's so cute. So fun fact, you guys, this is actually one of those products for me that taught me something because when I first got into makeup, I never tried this. I didn't try this for a long time, like years and years had went by of me being into makeup before I tested this bronzer. And this was one of those products that taught me the difference between a luminous or like a shimmery bronzer and a matte bronzer, because I didn't realize how stark the difference was on my skin and like, and you know, shaping out the face and texture and all of those things. And I, before I had tried it, I was always like, oh, it's overhyped. Like nobody needs that. It's not necessary. And then after I tried it, I was like, wait a second. Like this is, this is so nice. Like it has this matte finish. It sinks into the skin. And and it was something that after I tried it, I was like, ooh, I can see like there's something different here. Like I can tell a difference in quality, in texture, the finish, like everything about this. And it's just, oh, it's just, it's one of those products for me that when I look at it, I'm like, oh, you taught me, you taught me, you cutie. So do you guys want to talk about a double standard, right? I just got done telling you with that hula. Everyone said it was so good. I, in my head, I'm like, it's overhyped. You don't need it. It's unnecessary. But what, when I heard about it, did I run out and buy because I thought it was so necessary? the NARS orgasm blush. <laughs> like I was dead ass convinced that you had to have this. I, everyone said it was great. Like again, hyped, overhyped. Like everyone talks about it. Everyone's wearing it. And I had to run out and buy it. I've had this for, I don't even want to know how long. <laughs> easily a couple of years. And this is just one of those products that I don't think I'll ever get rid of. Like, oh, look at how cute that is. So blush, no blush. Look at how just like, mm, like a cute little rosy moment. Um, but for some reason, and I laugh about it now because what kind of a double standard is that? Like, well, this bronzer is like way overhyped. What is more hyped than this blush? Literally nothing. And I just, I was like, I have to have it. I have to have it right now. Guys, do you want to know something fun? I just thought about this. I'm like, I should be looking at these to see how old a lot of these products are. When did they expire? I'm looking at this as Stay Lauder Foundation, there is not that little container, the open container that tells you when it expires. There isn't even one of those on this bottle, okay? That can't be good, right? <laughs> like, it's not on here anywhere. There's no little open container. Hmm, okay. Now going into brows, as many of you know, there are two main camps for brow pencils. We have the ABH brow pencil people and the Benefit brow pencil people and uh, brow pencil people. Pfft. 
that was a tongue twister. But of these two groups, I am more than happy to admit to you that the number one spot was actually held by the ABH pencil. Now, the only downside to that is that that's not the pencil I had. And at the beginning of this video, I mentioned my rule was I had to have it in stock. So I'm going to go ahead and use both of these. They were both sent to me and they're both by Benefit. This is the Precisely My Brow Pencil. I'm using it in the shade 4. And then I'm using their Gimme Brow Brow Gel in the shade 4.5. The pencil, like I mentioned, came, I believe, in second place but the gel was their top rated bestseller for Ulta. Okay, so brows are done and ready to rock. And on a day where I want like nice, calm, chill vibes, I end up with a very full coverage foundation and the Morphe James Charles palette as the palette that was a top rated palette. So this is what I'll be using. I'm still gonna be sticking to the more neutral side of this palette, but just so you guys know, there's a lot of option in here for color. I just, I just don't really wanna touch it because I'm just feeling neutral. I'm feeling, I'm feeling old school, if you will. So I'm gonna go ahead and just like start throw in some of these colors on my face. I don't really know which ones. I'm thinking like maybe these three right in here, these nice, nice beigey brown kind of shades. It's kind of, kind of my jam. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and start there. I think I'm going to start with this middle one right here. So let's go ahead and talk real quickly about this palette and like how it ended up being the one in this video, because this for me is kind of where the Ulta website failed a little bit. So as far as like the way that they sort things and judge them, because I typed in eyeshadow palettes and it kind of bummed me out. Like I, I had them done by bestseller and the number one bestseller said that it was the Amrezy palette that just came out from ABH. And I'm like, really? Like, how is that the best? Like, it just came out. How is that the best seller? Well, maybe it's just because they sold a lot of it. Like, I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to just maintain a neutral opinion here. So then I went ahead and I thought, well, okay, let's go ahead and try the top rated, see if that changes it at all. Because again, I was going for like older, you know, like older mixed with newer. And I thought, my God, there's a ton of palettes on this website. Like, how am I not getting something older? So I switched it over to top rated. <laughs> nope, the Amrezy palette was still number one. So then I went ahead and I started, uh, uh, drifting down the list and it was like all of these other whether I was on bestseller or top rated all the other palettes that were listed were also like newer palettes so I just went ahead I left it on bestseller and I kept scrolling down until I hit a palette the first palette that uh, that I did own don't get me wrong obviously this palette really is a bestseller palette like it was the James Charles palette. You know, there's no shade there. And it's good too to get to use it because this is something that I don't ever gra gravitate towards. It's just that like, I expected it to be more of like a traditional palette, like the Modern Renaissance from ABH or like an Urban Decay Naked palette or something. I don't know, but I just didn't expect this one. Again, it's not that it's awful. It's just, I personally don't get a ton of use out of it because it has so much in it that I don't use. It's a larger palette, so it's pretty cumbersome. And I don't know, it's just, it's not my favorite palette. I'm gonna go in with my finger and take Take this uh, white shade right here and I'm gonna like pack it in on this lid just to see if I can kind of I want to do like an all matte look and if I can get that to stay nice and rich Oh yeah, that'll work. I'm just kind of like blending it out with my finger. Also really quickly, I'm actually gonna take the white shade right here, mix it in a touch with this yellow banana shade and I'm actually gonna create like an under eye brightener because I feel like I need just a little bit of brightness under there. Ooh, perfect. All right, so I went ahead and I moved the camera out and then I'm like, oh, I kind of want to add liner. But uh, here's the thing. I didn't, uh, I didn't like look up one on the website. So I'm just going to use one I've been using a lot lately. This is the L'Oreal Age Perfect Black Liner. And I'm going to put this on like the upper like waterline and then also upper lash line just a little bit and then kind of like smudge it in. All right, so now that we have that done, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the rest of the face, which at this point means I am going to give myself a little spritz of some setting spray. And for the purposes of this video, I did pull three different setting sprays. I have two, of course, that were very highly rated. This is the Urban Decay All Nighter and the NYX Bear With Me Prime Set Refresh Spray. These have both been favorites of mine for a very long time. I love them. I think they're great sprays. And I decided to add into the mix a little bit of my Catrice Dewy Glow Setting Spray. And this was, I think, on either either the top or the bestseller list, but it wasn't near the top, but I use it all the time. So I figured I would throw it in. And because I'm already looking very matte, I'm actually going to stay clear of the Urban Decay All Nighter and just go in with a few spritzes of my NYX Bear With Me spray. Oh my God, you guys, I just got so hoodwinked by that freaking bottle. The nozzle is clogged. And as I sprayed my face, it was like bang, water cannon straight to my actual face. So no, thank you. Um, I'm going to set that one aside and use another top rated spray. One that I've used a thousand times, my Morphe Continuous Setting Spray. 
Yes, honey, drench me. Now for a highlight, this is actually one that I have used time and time again on my channel, and I was really excited to see it among the top rated because y'all, this highlight from Lorac, this is in the shade Celestial. It's one of their light source mega beam highlighters. I am like die hard obsessed with this. It's so Oh my God, it's so good, it's so blinding. So I'm gonna go ahead and take some of this and buff it into my cheeks a little bit here. Okay, y'all, you better believe me when I say that this highlight is so beautiful. I have used this so many times. Like, it's, you can't see it on camera, but there's like a noticeable dent in this. And I, you, like, it was my everyday highlight. I used it constantly. The texture, quality, highlight, the beam factor, everything about this is just like top notch. Very easy to see why it's one of the top rated. Very easy. Go ahead and spray my face down. One more time. Page, don't talk with your spray going. Oh my God. All right, now going into mascara. First things first, we have to obviously curl up our lashes. So we're gonna use the e.l.f. Lash Curler. I actually just talked about this in What's New with e.l.f., which I'll link up here. And then we're gonna go in with a mini mascara, which I have from Benefit. This is their Roller Lash. And this one is kind of weird to me because I didn't expect the Roller Lash to be one of the best sellers because when I think about the Roller Lash, I think of it as just like a really natural mascara. And it was really high rated it has like 4.8 or something crazy out of five stars everyone really loves it so i'm gonna go ahead and go in with a few coats of this okay you know what guys in the words of my old friend jake y'all better just butter my butt and call me a biscuit because i did not expect that this mascara looks so good like i don't know what why don't why do i remember this so differently like in my eyes this was a very thin natural mascara that didn't build and i'm telling you what i just built this up and it looks so good like so good, yes, okay, all right, all right. All right, now moving in next to lips, I'm gonna grab a ColourPop lip liner. This is in the shade 951. And I'm just gonna give, give my lips a real quick line. I'm just really smudging that in so I don't have a ton of the burgundy color that comes through. Okay, y'all wanna tell me how long my damn necklace has been turned around like this? Oh my God, the whole time, the whole time. And then for the final touch, we're gonna go ahead and of course go in with a gloss per usual. And when I typed in gloss, I was not surprised at all to see the Buxom full on lip polish be the thing that popped up first because y'all, this is the cult classic. This is such an amazing gloss. Um, I'm going in with the shade Claire. Guys, this smell is so nostalgic. I can't. Ugh. So fun. Um, these were actually one of the first products that I got into in makeup when I wanted a gloss. I think it was the shade, I want to say it was the shade Dolly from Buxom. I got the lip liner and the matching um, either lip polish or cream or whatever they are. Oh my God. So it makes that smell. Brings so many memories back. Ugh. And all right, you guys, this is the finished face. Let me know all of your thoughts and opinions down below. Do you like the way it turned out? Do you like the products, the weird take on this video? Any and all thoughts, again, please be sure to leave them down in the comments. Me and these products go overall, I would say they worked very nicely. I didn't have any, you know, overwhelming issue with anything. Uh, the complexion products are still really nice. You know, bronzer, blush, highlight, the Tarte Shape Tape, all that sort of stuff. The only thing that's throwing me off is the Estee Lauder foundation. And if I'm being honest, it's just making me feel really old because when I started wearing that so many years ago. Um, I don't know if you know this, I'm 30 now. And uh, you know, I, I mentioned it, I mentioned it often on this channel. And I feel like as a ripe 30 year old, a ripe 30 year old one, <laughs> So that's a little bit PG-13 page, bring it back. Um, I just, I feel like now my skin needs so many different things and that just has such a um, like thickening and meets matte finish. And it's just so different from what I wear now that it's just making me feel all kinds of old and nostalgic. But other than that, everything else went really well. So let me know again, all of your thoughts and opinions down below. If you haven't checked me out yet, Instagram and on Twitter, those will both be linked in the description box. And of course, if you haven't subscribed, turn on your post notifications, please be sure to do that as well. I do upload three new videos a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and they go up bright and early between 6 and 7 a.m. my time here in good old Northern Michigan. So subscribe, turn on your post notifications. You guys, that is it. Thank you all so, so much for watching. Please don't forget to have a great day, night, weekend, whatever it is when you're watching this, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Hey, beautiful people. Welcome back. So I hope, what was that? Welcome back. So goodbye. Calm down. And I really hope you're ready to dive into this video because I kind of, <laughs> did you guys hear that? I couldn't, I couldn't breathe there for a second. That's weird. Ma. Mom, I need you to answer me. It's very important that you answer me. 
I just messed up the beat. <laughs> Mom! <laughs> Oh, my leg is tired. <laughs>